Well, really, uh, really proud of the guys. Um, we've practiced well uh, all week since getting back from uh, the Arizona trip, and um, we've really told them, tried to tell them. I think that's one of the hardest things in sport when you've you come back uh, and you have to play, whether it's home road or home home road road. You get a big win over a top five team, and then come back and get that next one. I think that's one of the hardest things to do in basketball, and uh, we were pretty impressive tonight. Uh, we were engaged right from the beginning. Uh, we really talked about concentration all week, and I thought our guys really concentrated well. Uh, in a lopsided game, only to have eight turnovers, um, I thought we were just uh, really good in a lot of areas. We took good shots. We made shots. We shared it. 23 assists again. Uh, this team just continues regardless of what the circumstance is. Um, they play awfully hard, and they play together. And um, I thought we were really good at both ends tonight. Steve, I know uh... – TJ's got the sprained ankle. How how's it looking, really? Uh, well, we hope good. You know, he'll be crutches, boot, um, trying to get that thing rest and a lot of treatment. Um, I told him five minutes, two, one and one. That's not a bad line in five minutes. So um, we're having fun with him, um, and and that's who he is. So, but we obviously got to get him back as soon as he as soon as we can. But uh, it was a it was just a sprained ankle, so it wasn't. Um, it's not a bad one. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what the next 48 hours looks like uh, as far as his availability for Saturday. So there's a, x-rays have ruled out a break or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I just met with the doctors. I saw them at half, and then I saw them after the game. So it's just a, a sprained ankle. So Bryce is really feeling it tonight, huh? What's that? Bryce is really feeling it. Tonight. Well, you know, he's been – I think he came into the game, I think, around 50% from three in Pac-12 play and um, goes eight for 14 tonight. I mean, he's just um, – he's really good with moving out the ball, and his teammates found him tonight, uh, found him in transition, found him in half court. Um, you know, and then you got to make him. And he did a really good job in knocking down shots. You know, we make 14 threes. You know, when our team does that, we're going to score a lot of points. What's it going to feel like with him on senior night? On well, obviously, it's an emotional week. Uh, there's no question about that. But, uh, you know, I got I got where I'm always wearing two hats, but that one hat gets worn a lot when it's that coaching hat um, because he's one of 15 guys on this team. And um, from a coaching standpoint, I'm just proud of how he's handled everything. He's, um, in my opinion, uh, he's been evaluated and critiqued probably as much as uh, any player, at least in the Pac-12 over the last four years. And all he's done is prove himself time and time and time again. So from a coaching standpoint, uh, extremely proud uh, of that situation because it's a player that came in one way and is, is really leaving as an outstanding player. And um, so I appreciate his efforts, Isaac's efforts. Those two came in together, and they've just been tremendous for us over the four years. They've done everything we've asked them to do in the classroom, in the community, on the court. Um, and those things make you awfully proud. And as a dad, I'm awfully proud of Bryce, of who he's become as a man, um, dealing with things over the four years of staying true to who he is. Uh, he never wavered from a game like this or a game at Utah where he didn't make a shot um, and everybody thought, you know, he should be back in seventh grade uh, playing. He never wavered. Um, he was a he's just been a tremendous teammate. Um, great, great person, and those things from a dad standpoint mean the most to me. Uh, Coach, you guys held uh, Washington under 40% shooting. Uh, got 20 turnovers, uh, which led to a lot of points. What did you think of the Well, we had a lot of field? deflections. I don't know how many we ended up with uh, for the game. We had 15 at half, uh, and six minutes into the second half, we had seven. So we were at 22. I don't know where the total was, um, but we've talked all along the whole year of our basketball IQ. And the guys are starting to figure that out defensively, too. Um, we've seen that over the course of the last eight games, um, just a gradual confidence that's been building at the defensive end. All of a sudden, now we're seeing guys uh, anticipate, anticipate plays defensively. We've always shared it. We've always made the extra pass, the best play possible on offense. But defensively, we've kind of just been stuck to our, guarding our own guy. And now, all of a sudden, they're starting to figure things out uh, and really anticipating well. And I thought tonight we really anticipated well. Whether we were in zone or man, we did a lot of good things of helping one another. Uh, when TJ went down, obviously 
that was a timeout when he headed to the locker room. Uh, what was the message to your players at that point? Just GG getting. <laughs> you know, we, it, when that happens, it's next guy in, and we just challenged our bigs that – um, and we let the backboard get away from us a little bit. Obviously, TJ's a very good rebounder for us. Um, but I thought, you know, our guards did a good job. Zoe got down there and got seven rebounds. Um, but I think that's something GG, he ends up with six. Um, I don't know what EK, EK ended up with four. Uh, so we kind of just challenged our bigs. And if there was an area of, of weakness in this game, it might have been the backboard. But again, you know, we shot 52%, they shot 39 So there's going to be a lot more missed shots one way or the other. Uh, and then you guys kind of ran away with it. Was there any thought to taking the starters out uh, earlier tonight? Well, we started taking them out at three and a half. I mean, when do you want me to take them out? Five? Is there a secret secret meeting? Um, I, I don't know when that secret time is. Uh, I was a player once. And when you're a player, if you're going to get pulled with eight minutes to go in a game, guess what you end up doing? not beating people this this soundly you know so no that's a that's a wrong message uh our i got to keep these guys fresh i got to keep these guys we're not practicing long so if i look at the minutes tom only played 22. i mean we everybody's minutes as i look at it bryce might have been close because of the injury that happened in the first half and those foul trouble everybody else's minutes are down so uh if i had to do it all over again i'd probably sub the same way Well, I think they're playing hard, and that's a credit to uh, Lorenzo and his staff. You know, obviously, they use, you lose a player like that. Uh, that's a lot of points that he gets and a lot of points that he distributes to. So, both games were very similar from our standpoint, one with him, one without him. Um, but you, you got to take your hat off to Lorenzo of getting these guys to play that hard when you've had, obviously, a tough conference season and your best player's out. Uh, and we've seen that on tape. They played really hard up in Pullman a few nights back, so they've got our attention coming into this, and they got our players' attention because I think you saw how hard our players played. So when you get, you're get you missing a player like that, about all you can do is to try to get your guys playing hard, and I thought they did. Coach, uh, a few of the Lakers were in attendance tonight. Uh, is that something your team notices, and does it, do you think it affects their play at all? Um, I, I would have no idea. It might be a question you ask our players. I, I would say it doesn't have an impact because uh, we've had we've had other players from the NBA in here all year. We've had scouts in here all year. We've had I think to, I think the other day was our 86 practice, and we've had scouts at 75 or 76 of them. So our guys are used to that. Um, so I'd be very shocked if they play at a higher level because all of a sudden there's a certain franchise that's in the house. Um, our guys aren't like that. Our, our guys are next game. They want to do everything they can to, to play hard and play well. And I think that's why they've consistently won this year. Um, and that's what makes them a special group. It, it doesn't matter what the circumstance is. It's just the next game. So let's go out and play as hard as we can. And let's have fun doing it. And they're doing that. You played that lineup with EK and four guards uh, towards the end of the game. What do you think of how that looked? And do you think that's a lineup? Well, with TJ team? down and TJ out, we're going to have to play some four guards. Um, like we were in November and December. We haven't played much four guards here for the last, well, I'd say, a month and a half, really since the SC road game. We've, we probably haven't played four guards more than two or three minutes uh, since that stretch. Uh, but when you lose a big, um, you know, you can either go t deeper into your bench or you go from an eight-man rotation to seven. We chose to go seven. I think we'll cho choose to do that again on Saturday if, if in case we don't have TJ. So we've got to rotate those four guards in there. Um, and I thought we were really good. You know, when we do that, Zoe just becomes the bottom of the zone. He's a great rebounder. He's a great anticipator. Uh, and now we've got four guards out there that are pretty special. So offensively, we don't slow up. We don't really change much of what we do. Uh, we're just not quite as big. All right, thank you. Thank you.